Moving on to additional examples. x squared plus 9x equals 0. Is it in that good setup? I say it is. We have our terms together on one side in descending order. We have only two terms, so it's not exactly like the examples that we've seen so far, but it definitely meets the criteria that we have for a good setup. Our terms all together on one side, in descending order, the equation equals zero. Right now we are ready to factor. Before you have thoughts about binomial patterns and squares, remember the first thing to always think about when it comes to factoring is the GCF. Each of these terms has an X, so there is a GCF, an X that comes outside of parentheses with x plus 9 left over inside of parentheses and there is no additional factoring for us to do so any thoughts that you had about x plus 3 x minus 3 or anything like that are inaccurate basically just remember always think GCF first that that is a good move and it prevents us from making incorrect moves okay so now we have it factored when it's once it's factored we are looking for what are these parts multiplied together that we can split up into individual equations. And we can maybe see that x plus 9 is one part that we can split into an equation equals 0. The other part, it's just that x, x equals 0. It takes us actually right to our first solution, x equals 0. This side, we have an, another couple of steps to do, take away 9 from each side leaves us with x equals negative 9. So an example where the factoring that we do is just a GCF, but after that we are still able to split it into two separate equations, find our two solutions. There's our solution set, 0, negative 9. It's fun for us to go through a check. Let's check x equals 0. Back to the original equation, x squared plus 9x equals 0. Plugging in a 0 in place of each x takes us to 0 squared is 0. 9 times 0 is 0. And 0 plus 0 does equal 0. That's a check. It might not seem like there's a lot of really interesting or anything going on here with all these zeros and 0 plus 0 equals 0. Well, all we want is for an equation what's the number that we could put in place of the variables to make this thing true and it turns out that putting a zero in place of x would make it true that's all we need so definitely x equals zero is a valid solution x equals negative nine we'll put a negative nine in place of each x we have negative nine to the second power that's a negative times negative is positive middle here we have a positive 9 times negative 9 so there's a negative 81 and positive 81 plus negative 81 does equal 0 so again both of our solutions checked out continuing to our next example we are looking at x squared minus 5x equals negative 6 an example that is not in the form that we would like it to be in we want all of our terms on one side equal to zero. So this problem requires one step before we can get to the factoring part. This negative six needs to be canceled. I can cancel this negative six with plus six, but it's an equation. So if I do it on one side, I need to do it to the other side. Now here the negative six with positive six cancel and we can write equals zero. The plus 6 on the left side, we have to be cautious when we're moving and canceling terms that we always combine only like terms. So the plus 6, I did not aim to combine it with x squared or with minus 5x. I even have it written in space here where I know it's going to end up as the third term, the constant term. So be cautious when when we see that we don't have it equal to zero that means we just need to move that term to the other side but make sure that that term on the other side ends up also in descending order so we're collecting all of our terms together on one side but they also should be in descending order because that's how we like 
our polynomials to look when it comes time to factor them. And it's that time right now. Our leading coefficient is 1 of this trinomial, meaning we look for a pair of numbers multiplied together is a positive 6, added together negative 5. That pair of numbers negative 2 and negative 3. And now that it's factored, we can split these up into two separate equations. x minus 2 equals 0 and x minus 3 equals 0. And we'll solve these two equations. We are aiming to isolate the variable, cancel minus 2 with plus 2 on both sides, leads us to our first solution, x equals positive 2. Dealing with x minus 3 equals 0, we need a plus 3 on each side. To isolate the variable, take us to our second solution, x equals positive 3. There is our solution set. 2 and 3 were our solutions for this equation. Here are two more problems for you to try. Solve these two equations. Pause the video, take a few minutes to work on these, and then restart the video and we will look at the answers. For the first equation, we're not seeing all of our terms together on one side. And we don't have it equal to zero. This 7x needs to be moved over to the left side. I need to cancel the positive 7x with negative 7x. And if I do it on one side, need to do it to the other side of the equation. Now check out where I've written my minus 7x. I, I thought ahead about the fact that these terms should be in descending order. I definitely have the x squared to begin with, and I have the constant term to end with, but I don't have my regular x term. So that minus 7x will become the middle term. Just be cautious. Definitely I have the cancel there, but I want to have my terms in descending order. I like x squared minus 7x minus 8. So we can think our leading coefficient is 1. To factor, we want to find a pair of numbers that multiply together equals negative 8. Added together equals negative 7. There is the pair of numbers negative 8 and positive 1. We can split these up into two linear equations. Make some space over here. One part, x minus 8 equals 0. The other part, x plus 1 equals 0. To solve this equation, it's add 8 to each side. x equals 8. This side, take away 1. Each side, x equals negative 1. There are our two solutions, 8 and negative 1. Similar problem with this equation. We don't have our terms together on one side. So my first move is take away 2x to, to leave me with 0 on the right side. And on the left, again, cautious about our like terms. x squared minus 2x equals 0. Now we can factor it. Another example where the only type of factoring we had was to find the GCF. Divide the x out in front of parentheses. Leave us with x minus 2. Now that's factored properly. Split it up into two equations. There's one part, x equals 0. The other part, x minus 2 equals 0. And that's solved. There's our first solution, x equals 0. This we want to add 2 on each side to take us to our second solution, x equals 2. And there is our solution set. 